Hi, it's Matt here from Go Green Autos. So in this video, I'm going to do a comparison between these two fully electric vans, the Nissan ENV 200 and the new Maxus eDeliver 3. So this uh, ENV 200 is actually sold, it's going out tomorrow. So while it's here, I thought I'll uh, come in on Sunday while it's quiet and make this video because I very much see the eDeliver 3 as the alternative or probably the replacement to the ENV200. So the NV200 is uh, getting a bit long in the tooth now. It's actually been around since 2009, 12 years now. The electric version like this has been around since 2014 in the UK. Um, actually, there were a few in 2013. But um, yeah, it's getting a bit old now. And the rumors are this is being uh, withdrawn from production this year. Um, and uh, if the rumors are true, it's being replaced with a rebadged Renault Kangoo. So we are due to have the new Kangoo electric, but the Kangoo is a class below and they already rebadged the Kangoo. Um, but if that's true, maybe they're gonna do a Kangoo XL, which might be bigger than the current Maxi Kangoo, which would then put it in this class. Or maybe they're gonna do away with this sort of mid-sized van completely, who knows. But that is why the new eDeliver 3, I think, is going to be very much the alternative vehicle if you're looking for that sort of mid-size van. Just jump back here to the uh, NV200. So as a diesel van, these are quite unpopular in the UK. Uh, seems to be all other vans sell in much greater numbers and in any review, the NV200 does very poorly. But I think that's probably because they put quite a, a feeble diesel engine in there. Um, but as an electric, this van has done very well and it's very popular and still very popular. But I think possibly that's more to lack of choice than the actual um, design and specs of the vehicle. So this particular van is a 2015 24 kilowatt hour battery version and it's the Techna, so top of the range because it's got the um, diamond cut alloy wheels there. So these vans were originally 24 kilowatt hour batteries and then in uh, 2018 or so they um, went with the 40 kilowatt hour batteries. There wasn't anything in between like they did on the Leaf because obviously the Leaf they did 30 kilowatt hours but on the ENV 200s they went straight from 24 to 40 and they've remained with the 40 kilowatt hour battery to date. And as I said, it sounds like these are going out of production, so there won't be anything any larger. So the Maxus eDeliver 3 is a brand new van. It is the very first van that is built as electric only. All other electric vans like the NV200 over there and other uh, new electric vehicles like the uh, Vauxhall, Vivaro and all the other Stellantis equivalents of it are still diesel vans but with an electric drivetrain. So this is the first and probably possibly the only electric van in the world that it's built to be electric only. There's no ICE versions of it and because of that the construction of the van is a little bit different and it's lightweight and it's meant to be, well it's designed to be lightweight and therefore very efficient. In the UK currently we only have the one size panel van. There is a long wheelbase chassis cab version where you can build your own body um, but they come with two battery sizes. The panel van comes with a 35 kilowatt hour pack which this one is fitted with or the larger 52.5 kilowatt battery and the chassis cab versions are only available with that larger 52 kilowatt pack. So these vans are made by SAIC Motor, which stands for Shanghai Automotive Industry Corporation. So SAIC is a brand that is not well known in the UK. Uh, they used to hide their name, uh, but now they're putting their name on the back of all the vehicles. Um, they're obviously Chinese, but they're a huge motor manufacturer, one of the largest in the world. And last year they sold 5.6 million vehicles and they also make vehicles in China for Volkswagen, um, Ducato and General Motors. And SAIC own the MG and LDV brands. They bought them from the failing British companies and we're now getting uh, new models back from them under these brands. So obviously we've got the MG vehicles and they're doing an awful lot with electric 
um, powertrains in those vehicles and now we're getting the LDV and Maxus vehicles. So the brand used to be called LDV and they had the old uh, Maxus branding which was the name of the uh, large LDV van but they've now dropped the LDV brand and the brand itself is called Maxus and this is the very first ground up new electric van from them. Well, I'm back into the unit because of course I've got another Sayak motor van here. This is the LDV EV80 and of course this is the original Maxus uh, van. So when they purchased LDV uh, many years ago now they got themselves this body shell which was the original LDV Maxus body shell and they then have put an electric powertrain in this and this was for sale for two years or so in the UK um, and this has now been replaced with a revised van called the eDeliver 9 similar size large electric van but using completely new uh, a body shell with a new front end um, because actually these weren't selling particularly well because they were this you know they looked a little bit dated but all they took from the original van was just the steel body shell they obviously bought the um, stamping equipment and everything from the British uh, but everything else was new and this has got a 56 kilowatt hour battery pack underneath but uh, yes the company have got a lot of history of making electric vehicles I believe they sold 320,000 EVs last year so back out in the sun now so why do I think that is the replacement to this well it's basically because of the size so these sort of had the mid-range electric market uh, cornered to themselves because all the other electric vans were um, small slightly smaller so your Kangoos your Peugeot partners and Citroen Berlingos um, and there's nothing else in that mid-range sector and then there was one or two bigger vans like some of the converted um, transits and uh, obviously the um, Maxus EV80 that I've just shown you and the Maxus eDeliver 3 here clearly had that van in its sights because the styling is quite similar uh, the sizes is, are quite similar however this does do everything a little bit better slightly larger carrying capacity payload slightly bigger cargo area this is 4.2 cubic meters in the back that is 4.8 cubic meters sort of similar styling at the front but this is just very modern it's got a very modern front end obviously you've got led daytime running lights compared to those horrible yellow running daytime running lights on the uh, nissan um, front charging port as well which is great and very similar to the charging port on that um, big headlights like that uh, but this has got a very modern look to it very slab like sides very square uh, sort of boxy profile shallow windows deep sides plastic sills there um, because this has got a complete new uh, construction because it's designed ground up to be an electric and I've done another video on that if you want to have a look at that um, and it really looks like a refreshed version of that just bringing it up to date and it looks quite sort of chunky and stylish so I've opened up the sliding doors and back doors on both and we can have a look at the cargo space because obviously that's the most important part of any van and clearly Sayek had the ENV 200 in its sight when they designed this van because not only does it look very similar uh, similar sort of size and shape but it just does everything a little bit better so this has got uh, 4.8 cubic meters of space whereas that is 4.2 this also has a greater payload capacity and a greater towing capacity so in the ED3 the payload is 865 kilograms if it's got the 35 kilowatt hour pack which is what uh, this particular van has got but if you've got the larger pack 
the payload increases to 905 kilos. On the Nissan ENV 200 40 kilowatt hour it is 705 kilos. So I know this one is the 24 kilowatt hour version but let's just assume it's the 40. That's what I'm doing all the comparisons with because obviously the 40 kilowatt hour is, is the newer one and is in the same price range as the um, eDeliver 3. In the ED3 obviously we've got a longer load length which is what uh, most people would find an advantage and that is 2,910 millimetres whereas on the Nissan it is 2,040 millimetres. The distance between the wheel arches are the same on both which is 1,220 millimetres as it is on most vans but you can see in here the wheel arches are wider and that is because the van is wider so the maximum cargo space I'm just reading from my sheet here um, the what we want the width here so the width of this is 1665 millimeters whereas it is 1500 millimeters on the Nissan while this one is wider it's actually not quite as high as the Nissan the maximum height in the back on this is 1330 millimeters whereas it's 1,358 millimetres in the ENV 200. It's also the uh, towing capacity where this excels, and that's something that's been lacking with electric vehicles. It's not that electric vehicles can't tow, it's just because the manufacturers haven't gone to the effort of getting them um, homogenized. I think that's the right word, if I could say that properly, for towing. And that's just because they sell in low numbers and they don't really need to spend the money on doing that extra work to get them tested however the ENV 240 kilowatt hour can tow but its maximum towing capacity is only 410 kilos whereas the ED3 can actually tow 750 kilos with an unbrake trailer or 1200 kilos with a brake trailer but if you've got the larger battery pack version the 52 kilowatt hour one that uh, reduces slightly because the extra weight of the vehicle down to 1,090 kilos but that's still a lot more than twice the capacity of the Nissan. One area where these aren't quite so good for some people is these only have one sliding door on the near side, the passenger side. Uh, they have converted it for right hand drive vehicles because left hand drive vehicles have the sliding door on that side but one door only on these for now, maybe that will come in the future whereas the ENV 200 has a sliding door on both sides as standard. Both have um, barn style doors but while we're at the back the Nissans have a reversing camera but never any parking sensors which doesn't stop you hitting things whereas the ED3 gets both you've got reversing camera up there the same place as you get it on the Nissan but you also get parking sensors as well and the equipment levels is where this wins as well uh, there's no trim levels on that you just get one standard um, specification but you do get quite a bit of standard whereas on these like all traditional motor manufacturers do they have various trim levels to um, take your money off you this one in particular is the top of the range Tecna and that gives you alloy wheels you can specify alloy wheels on the eDeliver 3 um, that's one of the things you can specify the only options on these actually is alloy wheels whether you want a little glass window in your um, bulkhead dividing the passenger area from the cargo space and whether you want uh, different colour paint that's available in black and silver and white um, whereas the Nissan has um, on the older ones two trim levels on the newer ones three trim levels you've got your Vizier, Ascenta and Tecna this one is a Tecna spec uh, which you can identify because it's got the diamond, coat, uh, diamond cut alloy wheels um, and you've got the option of a winter pack on these with heated seats and a heated leather steering wheel uh, but everything else is pretty much the same in these they've got the same 
uh, standard dash and seat material. But the Tecna versions get the um, touchscreen sat-nav system that is out of a Leaf. Um, not that that's much of an advantage because inbuilt sat satellite navigation in vehicles is usually pretty poor and it's far better just to use maps on your phone. Um, but yes, this one obviously is top of the range Tecna. The newer 40 kilowatt hour versions look exactly the same. They haven't changed anything inside here. It's all hard um, plastics, but that's what you would expect for a van. Um, all vans are the same. Uh, the winter pack gives you heated seats and a heated leather steering wheel, but that's optional even on a Tecna. This particular one doesn't have it because the switches are down here. Um, the centre console on these has always been a little bit weird design. Um, but, you know, they're, they're a commercial vehicle, so they do the job. Um, the only thing that's not so good in these is the level of regen. Even though you do have a B mode and you can toggle there between standard driving mode and B mode to give you that extra level of regenerative braking, it is still really poor and you do have to use the brakes. Um, and it just feels very dated now. All EVs used to be like this, you know, toggling between D and B, but the regen is so light on this that it hardly does anything. And that's something that uh, the uh, Maxus uh, brings it up to date and is so much better. The common issue with the um, ENV 200 is seat wear. And that's just because of the size of the van. Um, it's not low enough that you fall into it and you fall into the seat. And it's not high enough that you bother to use the step and step up into it. So consequently, you slide your bum across this seat, getting in and out and it does cause excessive seat wear. Uh, I've seen multi-drop um, delivery vehicles with 15,000 miles on with completely worn out seats with the sponge hanging out and the metal frame that's in here. There's a metal edge of the um, seat base that ends up protruding through, sticking out. Um, and, uh, you know, normally at about, it does it normally at about 50,000 miles, but it does depend on how the van is being used. This particular van has done 47,000 miles or so, I think I just saw there on the dash. And the seat is still very good and it's much better than average. But um, it's no, you know, it's not because of the way the seat is designed, it's just because of the way naturally you get in and out. Um, the Maxus is about the same, the seat height is very similar, so it may well suffer the same, uh, but obviously they're not old enough yet. Um, but for some reason the wear on these seats is a lot more than other seats and I've re-trimmed many of these seats. Um, and the way the metal frame uh, is in the seats it ends up sticking out here and it can also end up sticking out through the bolster there. So I do think actually the foam in these seats is a little bit weak and uh, not as dense as it should be. Uh, because seat wear is an issue on these vehicles. Now when we have a look in the uh, Maxis, let me just turn that off so it doesn't beep. The height is about the same and we've got some bolsters, quite deep bolsters here on the side of the seat. Um, so only time will tell whether these are going to be the same. They've got quite a nice fabric. Overall the seats are really nice. Um, they don't look like van seats, they're like car seats, very sculptured. Um, stitching in a different colour. They just, they look really good. But the material is a hard wearing material and is slightly, how would I describe it, um, glossy, so uh, smooth. So I do think they might wear better, but time will tell. Um, you do get armrest on both seats, which is unusual, and they are very comfortable. Um, but as I said, the overall height of the van is very similar because they are similar sized vans. Um, and you don't actually get uh, a wide sill on these, so there isn't anything that you can actually step on. You've got to put your foot all the way up to the top if you want to uh, use the step to lift yourself in. Consequently, you're not going to do that. Most people would just hold the steering wheel and pull themselves in and slide their bum across. 
exactly as they do on the uh, Nissan. But the rest of it inside here is very nice. Again, it's all hard plastics, but you've got two colours of plastic, so it does lift it all a bit. You've also got some shiny um, piano back plastic um, around the screen in the middle. The steering wheel is much better. It's um, leather or leatherette. Um, stitching on it, it feels more premium as standard. They're just standard uh, plastic wheels in the Nissan. Um, there's a lot more buttons on the steering wheel than this van has, so clearly the same wheel probably comes out of a car. But we've got cruise control and the multimedia buttons there. Flat bottom as well, so for a van, really nice steering wheel. In the middle here, you've got a better center console. We've got large cup holders down there we've got a bit of storage at the back storage tray there uh, we've got USB socket there traditional handbrake but down here we've got switches for heated front seats and that's standard and that's very nice in an electric vehicle because it's much more efficient to heat the seats than trying to heat all of the air in the cabin there isn't um, a heated steering wheel actually i'm just double checking that i'm forgetting which vehicle i'm in yeah that's correct you don't get a heated steering wheel um and that isn't an option but obviously we've got heated seats and all vehicles get air conditioning as well um which you do also get on the env 200 but not the case in um many other older electric vehicles you don't get a glove box on this vehicle um, that's no biggie really because on a lot of right hand drive vehicles the glove boxes are absolutely useless because they end up having the fuse box inside them. So instead you get this big tray which I think in reality is better than a glove box. We've also got bins in the door, you've also got a bit of storage uh, on the grab handle there in the door. Um, so yeah overall I think the cabin in here is nicer um, you certainly feel like you're sat up higher and it feels a lot bigger vehicle than it actually is um, but again it's just that modern design small um, shallow windscreen high dashboard and you sit quite upright and very high and it's a really nice place to be um, if i just start this but if i do this does have a traditional key though which the um, emv 200 has uh, wireless keys but that's not really a big issue. Just stick it in, turn it around as if it was a starter motor and wait and then it starts up and now it's started. But uh, the big advantage of the Maxus is you have two driving modes and three levels of regen. So your driving mode is basically normal or eco and it tells you up there on the screen eco. Um, and you do need that because this has a, a more powerful motor. It feels really lively, if anything, too powerful. Put it in eco, um, reduces the power to the motor, stops you accelerating so much, um, and actually makes it much more enjoyable and easier to drive. In eco mode, it is still slightly more faster. Well, it feels more powerful than the um, NV200. Uh, this does have slightly more powerful motor, the same torque, I'll put the figures up on the screen. Um, even though there isn't a huge difference on paper, this is so much more lively. The big difference is the levels of regen. This has three levels of regen and you'll see there on the screen you toggle between medium, low and uh, high. There it is, high. Um, and the regen is really nice. In high, it is proper one pedal driving. That's something that the ENV 200 has been lacking. Um, so this, dri this has all the advantages of a modern electric vehicle, one pedal driving, strong regen. Um, and as I said, that's something that the Nissan has really been lacking and makes it feel quite dated. The gear selector in here is a rotary dial, which is much better as well. Uh, the Nissan can suffer from a, a linkage issue when they get older because it is still a physical cable um, arrangement on your park selector and a physical cable uh, lever that's moving so there is wear and tear there whereas this is just a switch so in time this system uh, naturally is going to be more reliable because there's no physical wear and tear. Um, 
heating system is a little bit basic in these you can't adjust the level of heat you can just adjust the level of the fan as you can with all others and then when you want heat you press the hot button to apply heat and if you want cold and air conditioning you apply the air conditioning button at first it seems a bit basic and a bit archaic maybe but actually i can see why they've done it it's a simple heater but it's actually a good idea in an electric vehicle because it makes you only apply heat or air conditioning when you want it so you can have the fan on and at this point you're blowing fresh air if i just turn air conditioning off you're blowing fresh air so very little energy is being used because it is just a 12 volt fan whereas um obviously on evs all evs the heating and air conditioning system uses an awful lot of energy and that obviously reduces your range whereas on this you can sort of control it better because when you want heat you apply the heat button and when it's hot enough you then turn it off so you're really maximizing efficiency the same with air conditioning turn it on and off which that's sort of normal on most vehicles anyway you've also got an eco button whereas if you've got heat you can press eco so that sort of gives you half heat and if you've got air conditioning you can press eco and that gives you half level of air conditioning so um, there's a lot of reviews saying how this heating system is pretty rubbish but actually um, it works and it works well for an electric vehicle the only thing that uh, doesn't feel great is when you turn on the air conditioning you can feel that air conditioning compressor kick in there it goes I don't know whether the microphone picked it up but you can hear it um, and you can feel a little bit of the vibration uh, the reason why you can hear it obviously with an electric vehicle it is utterly silent and you're going to hear any noise you can hear brake pumps and air conditioning compressors because there's no engine drowning out the noise um, but the air conditioning compressor on this vehicle is louder than others and you can feel the vibration um, I'm not sure what I'm feeling it through it's sort of through the floor or maybe through the seat and that just cuts in and out as it's being used but it's a very minor thing and you soon get used to it actually now the vibration has gone because it's probably got up to operating um, speed the infotainment system on this is touchscreen we've got settings we've got telephone we've got um, FM radio they do also have a DB DAB radio but the way it works is a bit strange it sort of thinks it's on USB it's the way it's implemented is a bit weird but it all works um, and later versions of these uh, do have um, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay but the um, original UK spec ones didn't but it does use the same head unit so I'm sort of thinking that possibly in the future there might be a firmware upgrade to bring car, um, phone mirroring to these ones but the rest of it is all pretty standard a very nice simple um, display we've got our battery pack there displayed um, like the traditional fuel gauge and our power meter here and then obviously our speeder and then we've got a screen there with various information trip and warning messages um, it's a very simple and easy band to get used we've to also got um, rain and light sensor up there on the windscreen and up here we've got an SOS function so if you have a, an accident and the airbags are deployed it automatically rings through to a control center and gives your location or you can push that and get assistance if you need it so overall the e-deliver 3 wins on um, in-cabin feel and driving experience mainly because of uh, much stronger regen and that's what you want an electric vehicle also the electric motor is much more lively in this the seats are more comfortable uh, it's great having the armrest having a leatherette steering wheel with stitching just makes it feel more premium um, also the narrower windscreen and side glass you feels like you're sat up higher um, feels like the van's a much bigger more commanding view of the road and just makes it overall a much better uh, more modern driving experience so let's talk about charging uh, charge ports are at the front on both vehicles as i said the nissan has a type 1 ac charge port 
Um, the new Leaf has gone to Type 2, but for some reason they've still stuck with Type 1 on the Nissan. It's not really a problem because your charge cable in the van always sorts it out when you plug into a Type 2 home or public charger. The only issue is when you come to use a tethered charger, it's likely to have a Type 2 end and therefore isn't compatible without an adapter. Um, the, DC, the DC rapid charging is a Chadamo, and this is 50 kilowatt. Again, Chadamo is the older technology, uh, but it's still properly supported in the UK. It's just some of the networks only putting in CCS, but it's not really a problem because uh, Chadamo is very well supported and will be around for an awful long time. So in reality, not really an issue. On the Maxus, it just brings it up to date, basically, as you'd expect. So our type two AC connector is at the top, um, seven kilowatt charge, I think maybe 6.6, I'm not 100% sure, but um, on the Nissans, they are 3.3 kilowatt a standard and you have to pay extra to have it as a 6.6 .6 kilowatt, whereas these are 6.6 .6 kilowatt a standard. And then the DC rapid charging is a CCS, which is the new standard going forward, but charge rates exactly the same. If anything, it's a little bit more fiddly on here because you've got these rubber caps on both ports and the charge port, while it's the same height, uh, you have to crouch down to use these because of the, because of the charge flap lifts up from your normal standing um, height they're obstructed a little bit you will get used to it and once you're used to it you wouldn't actually need to kneel down to see them you can do it do it all by feel but it's easier on there because that lifts up higher and the way it's angled is you're looking straight down in to it a little bit better but that's a very minor thing so next let's just quickly talk about batteries so the nissan emv 200 has a 24 kilowatt hour on the older ones or a 40 kilowatt hour on the later one however one thing in common is the batteries on a Nissan Leaf or a Nissan ENV 200 do degrade at a greater rate than any other electric vehicle. So I get to see a lot of electric vehicles, a lot of used electric vehicles, uh, including lots of high mileage ones. And uh, on average, all EVs, their batteries will lose 1% or less per year. However, with a Nissan, a Leaf or an EMV 200, on average it's 3% a year. So primarily that is because Nissan have never had active thermal management on their battery packs. Basically their battery packs aren't cooled. They rely on the air blowing under the vehicle to cool the battery as you're going along. However, on the ENV 200s, they do have basic electric fan cooling on them still doesn't work very well but they've got at least something to help whereas the leaf doesn't um, and if we jump inside this all nissan eve env 200 and nissan lease have always displayed the battery health and battery temperature so there on the screen we can see we've got battery temperature and there we've got battery capacity, which is basically the battery health. Um, and they are the only electric vehicles that display that information. And that's because you actually do need it. You need to monitor the battery temperature. And if it gets hot, you've basically got to um, stop using your vehicle or stop charging or slow your charging rate down. Um, whereas on all other electric vehicles, they don't display that information. You don't need it. You just ignore it and the vehicle will sort itself out and it's not an issue. So when it comes to the eDeliver 3, these basically haven't been around long enough, um, so we don't know what the batteries are going to be like. However, I have no doubt with them. Seg Motor Company make an awful lot of electric vehicles. While we haven't really seen many in this side of the planet, they've got a lot of expertise in this area, and I'm expecting that battery, well, that electric drivetrain to be as good as many of the others that we see, and I'm expecting the battery health to be 1% or less, like everything else. Um, there's a few factors that can vary that, but um, on the MG ZS EV, that's been around a little bit now, and battery health is just fantastic on those, and I'm expecting it to be excellent on this as well. Um, so 
while we've got no history of these yet because they're a new vehicle and haven't been around long enough I'm absolutely confident that that has got a first class drivetrain compared to the Nissan because it's well known now that the uh, Nissan, well the drivetrain's great, it's just the Nissan uh, battery chemistry and battery cooling isn't as good as any all the other EVs out there basically. Um, so yeah, in terms of batteries, while we've got no history, I think for long term life the eDeliver 3 is bound to win. So next let's talk about build quality. Um, well build quality is a bit of a difficult thing to judge, let's talk about construction style. So um, obviously the eDeliver 3 is a brand new vehicle, uses latest construction techniques and it's ground up to be electric only and therefore they are constructed different to a vehicle like this that was a diesel vehicle that's been adapted to have an electric drivetrain. So this uses the very traditional build structure where it's lots of steel panels welded together to make that um, body shell. This is all about uh, using the latest techniques to be lightweight and e uh, efficient. So this vehicle is lighter, um, even though it's slightly bigger. So this uh, uses a aluminium um, structure on the back, aluminium floor, aluminium bars with steel and plastic panels bonded to it. Um, you can see there it's got those thick plastic seals where they're not actually seals, they, there aren't any seals on this vehicle. That is just a plastic cover um, and underneath it is a, a steel box section chassis. The battery pack is much higher underneath so it's got great ground clearance and um, the battery doesn't hang down like it does on um, the Nissan ENV200. It's also got plastic panels on the front, so the wings are plastic, like they are on a Renault Kangoo and many other vehicles. Obviously your front bumper is plastic, but on this the bonnet is also plastic as well. Again that's all for weight saving, but I think that has one huge advantage, is your stone chips along the front aren't going to rust, and also plastic panels don't dent either. Um, all the other panels are steel, except some of the panels the complicated panels like that one there, that's all plastic and then the rest of it is steel and as I said it's got this very modern um, aluminium bar system with the um, steel panels bonded to it so it's all about um, saving weight. The doors also shut very nicely on this, it's all very light uh, and very precise and they don't need slamming hard to make them shut. Uh, I have done another video on this uh, which you can see on the channel where I look at what's under the engine bay and I've also put it on the lift and you can see underneath if you want to know more information about that. Overall all the door shuts and slams are all lightweight and precise and actually I like it for that. Um, it's all very easy to use, there's no slamming needed to shut those sliding side doors um, and it just feels more modern. What some people don't like is these lines of sealant between the panels. Well it's mainly along the roof and along the sliding doors and a little bit there. Um, and when you look at that you think mm, that looks a bit nasty. But it's just the modern construction techniques. Clearly here they're bonding plastic and steel panels onto an aluminium frame. Um, so they're using sealant in places uh, and they're clearly using black because white sealant would just go grey and horrible after a while. Um, but that doesn't really mean it's lesser quality, it's just a modern construction style. Um, I have driven these back to back, these two vans, and I have driven these for many, many years. And overall, I would much rather live with that just because of the modern lightweight feel it has. But I suppose the most important thing is actually reliability. But obviously these are a new vehicle and they've only just come out, so we just don't know yet. But uh, we have had the MG electric vehicles for a few years now, obviously from the same manufacturer, and they're proving to be very good. 
but this is a much simpler vehicle, uh, different, completely different construction. I've had a good look around these and I have no doubt this will be uh, an absolutely bulletproof, reliable, long-lasting vehicle. Indeed, the ENV 200, again, is very reliable. The only slight negative with these is they do suffer that be uh, greater battery degradation than other vehicles traditionally do. I'm not expecting these to be the same. I'm expecting um, battery degradation to be far more minimal and therefore far superior. Uh, and uh, in terms of reliability, then yeah, I'm expecting this to be absolutely top notch. So let's just quickly talk about range. So range is dictated by the size of your battery back primarily, also a little bit by the efficiency of the vehicle. But these have a 40 kilowatt hour battery and that's full size. So you have about 38 kilowatts of usable space that you can use. These have a 35 kilowatt hour battery or a 52 and a half kilowatt hour battery. What isn't clear is whether that's full size or usable size. So um, these do about uh, 150 miles range. If you drive very efficiently, you can get 160 miles out of those when it's empty. This one with a 35 kilowatt hour battery, I got 159 miles out of it driving on a mix of roads again when it's empty. The official figures on this one with 700 kilos in the back, the LTP tests are 99 miles um, combined to 141 miles city. But as I've proved, without any weight in the back, it does an awful lot more than that. So I think they are both very similar, but that being a little bit lighter, and I suspect a little bit more of an efficient drivetrain, uh, like for like, that's going to be more efficient. But these in 40 kilowatt hour has a few more kilowatt hours than a 35 does. So overall, these two, if that was a 40 and that's a 35, exactly the same range in the, in the real world. But obviously that's available with a 52 kilowatt hour battery as well. The 52 and a half kilowatt hour pack on these, I think will give you about 200 miles real world range in the summer if you're driving efficiently. The official W LTP figures are 230 miles city and 151 miles combined. But that's of course with 700 odd kilos in the back, as I said. But as always, uh, your range is dictated by driving efficiency. So obviously these are more efficient in the summer when you're not using heating. And uh, it's just like a petrol or diesel, it does depend how you drive and how heavy you are with your right foot. In terms of pricing, uh, they're all about the same. The ENV 200 is only available with one battery size. Obviously, this has got two battery sizes. The price of this, depending on specs, sits about uh, halfway between the, these two. Um, but obviously, this is available in different trim levels, so the price can go up if you put all the um, extras and things on it, whereas that's basically available in one trim with only those minimal options, as I said. The Maxus uh, new is about 26 for the smaller battery and 30 for the bigger battery. It does depend on the grants at the time because the grants do keep changing. Uh, and this sits somewhere between the two, but can go higher if you get the top trim levels. But obviously because the ENV 200 has been around since 2014, there are second-hand ones of these available. Uh, so most will have the 24 kilowatt hour pack um, and are obviously a little bit cheaper. Uh, the 40 kilowatt hour pack just hasn't really been around long enough yet to be available in the second-hand market because most vehicles are financed when new. Traditionally, people finance cars for three years, but vans for four or five years. So they're not old enough yet to be in the second-hand market in any numbers and people are generally keeping hold of them because there's not much choice to replace it primarily because Nissan haven't bought a bigger battery version of this out yet. Um, and obviously the uh, Maxus E-Deliver 3 is, uh, has only been out a number of months now, so it will be a while before any of those are available in the used market. 
So I think I've covered everything I need to show you on these. If there's anything else, then do write in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. Um, but yeah, primarily I just wanted to show you that they're both very similar vehicles. Uh, but obviously the Maxus just feels more modern. It's got a slightly larger cargo area with a greater payload, greater towing capacity generally better trim level inside and I think is the direct competitor or probably end up being the replacement to the ENV 200. So if you've liked this video please do click that thumbs up button on YouTube because that really does help other people find this video and this channel and uh, please do subscribe. I'm sorry to ask but if you don't ask people just don't subscribe. The majority of viewers don't bother clicking any buttons or subscribing but if you want to see other EV videos then do subscribe and hit the little bell button and do have a look at the other videos on the channel there are hundreds and hundreds of EV videos yet this channel gets very small viewing numbers so anything you can do to help share and comment uh, it will all help to get these videos found and as I said if there's anything you want to know then do write in the comments and I will do my best to answer and finally I might as well do a little plug if you want an electric van then go to gogreenautos.co.uk uh, and specifically if you want a Maxus E-Deliver 3 or one of the new E-Deliver 9s I can get them in as well uh, but I've got some of these currently in stock brand new pre-registered and available for immediate delivery.